Hello everybody. Here we are again already at Thursday Live, Matuska Taxidermy Studio, a supply company. I'm Tom Matuska uh, with Amber um, Ingalls and Brett Wingfield. You got that wrong last time. I know. Did, good Did I? Did I? Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, Mandy Swart is back with our cameraman Kirsten. Camera woman. Camera woman. And uh, we're going to uh, try to show you some things today. Uh, you can remember if you were with us last week and weeks previous, uh, we showed you mannequin selection, how to uh, cut the antlers, how to measure a mannequin. Um, Amber showed you how to sculpt ears on your mannequin, um, roughing them up, cutting tear ducts lip slots, everything you need to do prior to mounting. So today, we're gonna to teach you everything we can about eyes. And just make sure, same spiel for those of you that watch weekly, but those of you that are new, this is every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time, we go live with something new. We kinda of are gearing it off of what's going on in our studio and what we have to do, because we've learned over the time it takes much time to do it the other way. But um, we're kind of going off of that. If you guys have recommendations of what you want to see live, if you have questions, you can comment in. We try to answer all the questions as we're live. If you're watching late, you can still ask your questions and we would love to answer them. We do go back and look at the questions, so we do try to answer them. Um, so comment in, let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're doing right now. We've had some crazy, like I'm sitting in a, Mounting stand right now. Probably not going to get the best luck of getting something. Mounting stand? Mounting stand. Dentist office. Deer stand. Deer stand. Sure. Stand. We sell mounting stand. <laughs> Deer stand. <laughs> he was hunting. Either way, let us know what you're doing. We'd love to hear it. Maybe um, my buck came by and I'm sitting in my mountain stand. <laughs> <laughs> not good. That's going to be way worse. Bob Here yeah. we go. <laughs> um, make sure to stay tuned to the very end because we do do a giveaway every single week and we do have a big sale to give your guys this way but it won't be done until the very end so stay a tuned sale. A big, big, big sale, sale. Big, sale. Big, big sale big sale that's in the front lobby when you guys exit <laughs> our live audience you can check that out um, don't don't you people want to see her face because we do. Ready? She's, uh, yeah, come here you girls yeah. come here yeah. you are what makes this happen <laughs> come on kirsten Okay, come here. Kirsten is the eyes behind that. She is. Camera. Farther. And there she does a wonderful job. Um, a lot That's of the, the graphic, graphics that you see coming out of the um, supply company, a lot of our uh, emails and Facebook posts and catalog pictures, um, That's a lot of it's Kirsten. Don't say her last name. I don't want people stealing her, but she does do. She does okay work. <laughs> we can't do this without her. So absolutely, that's the face behind the prettiness. Yay! All right, start okay. it off, guys. This is a big topic. Eyes, eyes. I think we should pick one, huh? Okay. Um, they say eyes are the mirror of the soul, um, and there's a huge selection. For beginners, there's too many. I think your head kind of swims when you go through the catalogs. There are so many eyes. Um, I think we'll we'll start with one of the simplest styles, um, and just because it's a simpler style, um, no frills as far as blood vessels, scleral band, things like that. Um, that doesn't mean it's not a good eye, and you can't do a real quality um, deer mount or elk mount or whatever it happens to be. This all applies to elk and sheep and and deer and Anything that has eyes, you know, there's, um, we have uh, an aspheric eye, and this is an all brown aspheric eye, and it um, doesn't have the, the white band that you see around some of the styles of eyes. That's the, the scleral band, and it's just like a person. You have your iris, and the actual eyeball has, is white, and that's the sclera that shows. There's a pupil in the center. Um, any of these eyes come in either, either a medium coloration or a dark coloration. Both look very nice. Can we talk, what did he say about the line? We asked about That's the That's on the reflectives. That is the reflective. No, this is spheric. Oh, sorry, jump the gun. <laughs> but this is his, uh, the spheric eye, all brown, um, no frill eye, it's an inexpensive eye. Uh, both uh, Tohican and Todd Payer uh, make exceptional, exceptional glass eyes, and um, 
this one's a Tohican, and there's a lot of people, a lot of exceptional taxidermists that use this eye and get yep. by extremely well. Um, the next step up, probably, would be an Optech. Different companies might call them different things. Um, we started out with what's called an Optech, and it's got the white sclera around it. Now, when I first started, I wanted a white band in my eyes, and so nobody made anything like this. Somebody made it in the 40s and 50s, and then it was discontinued probably because of cost. I used to take my eyes and I would paint a white. I would mask them off with tape and I would paint them. And then by the time you got them set, you scratched them all up. On the outside? Sure. Yeah. And uh, so I used to do that all the time. What I discovered when somebody first started producing a white banded eye, I would put them in my deer and my deer looked extremely frightened, you know, like they got hit with a hot shot in the rear end. And customers would come in and say, wow, they really look like that? Oh yeah, state of the art, yeah, you know. I just, this is the newest thing to hit the market, you know. I didn't realize that there's a nictitating membrane, so you do have to temper that white a little bit because it's a little bit too much. Um, going up, uh, this is a, this is a pre-rotated eye. It has, it has, the iris goes all the way to the side on that side, and you have the sclera on the other side. How do you know the front from the back on those? On these, you can actually turn them. So think about what your, what your deer's doing. Customers come in, and I usually ask them on ear position, and customers tend to not know what they want. So you kind of have to plant the idea and I think I've told you all this story before, if you've heard, um, come to our, you know, talking about mounting deer, um, I will say, what do you want to do with their ears? And they don't know, but you can be real creative with the ears. Um, when I started, um, every taxidermist in the United States put their ears forward. There was very, very few that looked at the live deer and would put one back or both back. It was always forward. I mean, especially the smaller, you know, self-taught taxidermists, everything was ears forward. So when we started putting ears back, I would suggest to people when they didn't know what to do, how about if we put one back or one forward and I'll say, what was he doing when he, when you got him? Well, he's coming down a trail and I was on stand and friends of mine were walking, you know, and he knew I was there, but he didn't see me. So he's looking a little bit to the left and he had one ear focused on me. And then somebody, you know, my drivers were back there. I said, what if we have that outside ear focused on you. He can't see you, but he knows you're there. Danger's there. Um, he's gonna look a little bit farther to the left. You can put a little white in this corner and a little white in the back of this one and put this ear back because it's the closest one to the danger coming from behind. And instead of just a mounted deer with two ears forward, you created a time in the hunt. Customers come to pick up their deer and they go, ah, that's exactly the way he was. No, it's not. It's what I told you we were gonna do and that's what you know, and you can kind of plant that scenario and they think you're like, you copied that moment in time perfectly when you told them about the moment of time. Um, you guys are looking pretty funny at that. Well, we got questions for you. Um, oh, you go ahead, you ask any time. What's the best eye for light crescent of, uh, of white on an inside turn side of the mount? Inside turn and what's the deer doing? What's the best eye for a light crescent? Small, I would say light is small. Um, of white on the inside turn say? side of a mount. The um, best eye. I think any, you're going to have the either the Optech style or the pre rotated. Yep. The pre rotated. Here's a, here's a, a compound. this is a really nice eye. This is a pear um, um, eye and it's got, it's got, it's defined cornea. It's got, the cornea actually is a little bulged. So you can um, kind of see it that It has there. blood vessels. Can you see the blood vessels in it? That's a pretty eye. It is. Um, so the defined had... cornea isn't sphere, like this one would be the, everybody always asks. I've had two people sphere. call me within the last month saying that is the nicest eye on the market. That's a pretty eye. It is. Here's your color difference. Obviously they're in plastic, but why we're up close. Can we take them out? Well, as long as you tell Cindy what they are, shouldn't you? you know? Don't mess with her inventory. So here's the dark brown and here's a medium brown, <laughs> but it kind of gives you a dark chocolate. 
Hershey's chocolate. I mean, it's kind of, that's exactly what it is. That we, that's no. how we look at our leather too. Oh, what's the chocolate and what's the... Yeah, with the medium acorn, brown, you can, you can kind of pick out the pupil more where with the, yeah, with the dark brown kind, you really can't eye. pick out the pupil unless you have a flashlight Ooh. shining at it. Dave Smith, can I have a reflective eye in my mount? Hey, turn around. Hold on. Oh yeah. Let's Mr. Look at Dave that. Smith. Look at that big deer back there. <laughs> This is your beautiful deer, and by golly, reflective eye. <laughs> we'll have to ask the tactics. This is our, uh, looks like your crocodile got stabbed here. Tom. Uh, we have the crocodile CNI. It's going to be a very, very, very fun mount to do. What kind of eyes does he take? Reflective. Not pears. <laughs> Special <laughs> crocodile eyes. Um, so there's just a wide, wide variety. Um, just note that if you're going to use the the white of the eye, um, and you notice like some of these, this optic, this is Tohican optic, has considerable more white than that defined cornea payers, you know. So sometimes it's necessary to bury a little of that white. You might have to cut out a little bit of your form to hide some, and then your nictitating membrane is gonna hide some. Um, don't go crazy on the white, showing the white of an eye, because we've raised deer for 30 some years, and yes, you see it. I went to a Joe Kish seminar 30 some years ago and he said, you'll never see it. Once I got live deer, yes you do. Um, lots of times you don't. So raising deer for 30 years, dark brown, medium brown. What, dark brown or medium brown? That's the question, why dark, why medium? I noticed uh, you went and took pictures, you and Kirsten the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, you had some very light chestnut eyes and I think it's the sun. I mean See, the sun like ours were growing is up, though, able to penetrate. Um, I've got all these pictures here. Um, they're all taken out. They're all our from pan. our yep, our live deer. Um, here's the here's the reflective eyes. Can, is it reflecting? Yep. Yep. So the reflective, let's note on that real quick. There's two different styles. There's not a medium dark brown and dark brown, it's all one color, but hold that up flat, would you? You have the flat hemisphere where there's oh, nothing, it. and then you have the back hemisphere. The back hemisphere actually adds so you, they can have a bigger pupil size, so it actually is more expensive, more depth, more more depth and it shows off the reflective a little bit better, where the back one isn't, it's the back one's less expensive. And for Dave Smith, for you know, 190 bucks, that's a deal. I think so any, too. Any deal. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something to know. It's one color, but you do have the two different options. They both show, the flat one does show the reflection really, really well. well. Really well. This one just, in all the species that we carry, it just shows it off a little bit more. But they're really good. I, another note on those of you ordering reflective eyes, size down. I feel like they are all a touch, they seem a little big. touch big. Well, and the rest of these eyes are all glass eyes where the reflective are not. So you have to be a little Acrylic bit more eyes. careful as far as them scratching. And there are several companies out there. These are, are realized, um, I'm not sure they're even made anymore, but there's a lot of companies making, Acrylic. we'll call them polycarbonate. It's plastic eyes, you know. Yeah. Um, and they look good, they work good. Use wood tools, I think, when you set the eyes because you can scratch them. If you do scratch them, you're going to have to use some kind of acrylic to heal it. Um, Todd Craig says that, well, first of all, he says that he enjoys the videos very much. Wish we had them 25 years ago. Love you guys. Thank you. We love you too, <laughs> by the way. But he put a couple of reflective eyes and some coyotes and the customers love them. I don't think customers know that they're actually available, but I will say we are exclusively the only ones that you can get them from in the U.S. So they come yeah. all the way overseas, and you can only get them from Matuska Taxidermy. But customers, if you want to wow your customer, add it into the price of the mount and show them when they come in. They are going to love showing it off. We have a couple bears people. out the showroom, and I don't mm, think I'd ever put any so other sharp. kind of bear in there, uh, any kind of eye in those bears. They're fun to show off. They're not gaudy. They don't look super reflective until you want them to, right. you know, to right. shine away. You just come water by scene. at the right time and it just... People falls. want water scene videos. Water scenes, all right. Water yeah. scenes. Oh my. Um, probably worth noting, we've got about 10 really good reference pictures here, 10 or 12, and look at how little white is showing. Yeah. 
you know, just maybe a little here, a little bit. I picked one here. out and I put it back. Dave Smith says um, okay to 190. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a big deer. That's going to look exceptionally, exceptionally nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, also with any of these pictures, and we'll we'll talk about them later too. Um, notice on this one when we talk about nictitating membranes, um, that's this flap of skin, and it's a little membrane in the front corner of the eye. I never knew what a nictitating membrane brain was 30 years ago. Um, that's why, do we have some land there somewhere? We did have. Um, and uh, you will want to incorporate that into your mount. It's real easy to do. You can build it with, um, <laughs> everybody's hunting membranes. Uh, you can put it in with epoxy. You can buy commercial membranes. Um, but that's, Amber's going to show you how to uh, do that with the deer here. What do you do with the, you can show me this real quick, Kirsten. It comes in, it's sold as a pair and then you can get a six pack or single. Small, medium, and large. Um, how do you keep it wet looking with your eye? Um, for anything wet looking, I love that um, triple thick. Triple thick? Do this triple thick? Yeah. Here's what they look like. Some people use, um, um, not to ruin your sale, Mandy, but That's some people use. That's a medium size, too, by the way. Some people use uh, um, Weight Watchers. The little Weight Watchers come in plastic mm -hmm. containers. And I know a lot of junk. people. I know. A lot of people okay. trim them out of there and they make their own. Some people sculpt them though. Sculpt them out of epoxies. Yeah. So much epoxies. easier just to buy a six pack, guys. It is, and they look really nice. They, they do look, look really nice. nice. What else you got? What else you got? Well, are we ready to put an eye in? Sure. Do you want to draw a diagram on the board quick? One, yeah. two, three. Sure, one, two, three. sure. Yeah. What we're doing. And remember everybody that's watching, we do this every Thursday, 4.30. Um, tune in, um, enter your comments, tell us where you're watching from, what are you doing? Sitting in the dentist's office, waiting in the waiting room for your child to get done with dance, what is it? What are you sure doing right know. now? <laughs> <laughs> this is a family program. Picking up your child. <laughs> um, this is a little diagram that kind of simplify what we're talking about. Um, here's your glass eye. Um, your pupil, of course, runs horizontal. People starting out sometimes don't know that. Bobcats sometimes get put in, you know, horizontal when they're supposed to be vertical. Um, so kind of do a little reference on what you're trying, to, what you're supposed to be doing, what species. Um, the iris is the colored part, just like you got blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes. Um, that's your iris. The sclera or the scleral membrane or the band that is the white around the eye, and that's basically what makes up our, our glass eyes. So when we talk about the sclera, that's a white, talk about the iris, that's a colored part. Um, we try to, a lot of people overcomplicate eye sets and you can study them and study them and study them and second guess everything. Um, after you've done enough and you've produced enough good looking deer, um, don't make it harder than what it is. Um, the first thing, we call it a three-point eye set, and if you look at, um, if you can hold up, can you hold, yeah, there you go, you got a cast, and maybe you can hold up these as I talk about them, she can switch back and forth. Um, the first corner, the first corner is going to be where your lacrimal crease goes and you've got your tear duct going down in here. We're going to call that corner number one. So here you go, Kirsten. Here. Right here, one right here. Now scribe the, show them the belly of the, I'm gonna do that first from one to three. One to three, would be right here. That's a big belly. Now now sometimes it doesn't sag down that far, one. depending on the, the expression. So corner one, corner two, and corner three, Tom's gonna to go from one down to three, back and around like this. Now there's little rules of thumb. If I drew a line, across, horizontal to the ground, like this. Number two is gonna be up here, number three is gonna be back here, just three points. Three is typically slightly higher than one, so we're gonna put three slightly higher than that. I'm gonna draw that line, and that's the belly of my eye, okay? Corner number one, corner number three. Corner number two 
is going to come up like this and it's going to come around like so. Now, they're not 90 degree corners, they're changes in direction. So we're doing one, two, three, or one, two, three on the cast. And what you're holding up right now is our reference ear eye cast. And we have them in caribou and whitetail, left, right, and pairs. And that's, hold it up one more time. So you can get it either, and it kind of gives you exactly what you're looking for. Yep. These are plaster casts, I think. Yep. Brian and... Mike Yeska. Yep. Brian Olson and Mike Yeska did those. Yep. Now, something else to note, when you're positioning eyelids, almost every animal, look at your wives, look at your husbands, look at your working partners, look at their eyes, the pupil typically is considerably higher to the top, like you happen to be <laughs> top lid. Um, the top lid shades, I'm assuming it's a shading deal, the top lid almost always shades the pupil. So, so the pupil, you really, for me, I typically don't want it in the middle of the eye opening, I want it to hug the top lid a little bit, not buried behind the top lid. We got great bobcat pictures um, with, with the pupil way up, there's just a little bit of the pupil hanging down under the lid. Okay, now, this is just, let's say this is just an average um, deer eye. When you, when she shows you how to do the clay, I usually start out with a little straightness here before I drop down into my belly. And the way I describe this to students is, this is a ski slope you're gonna be going down. This is where you're gonna stand. It's not steep enough that you're gonna start going down before you want to. There's just a fraction of an inch up here that's slightly more level before you start going down. Let's show this, Kirsten. Here's a great reference shot of that little flatness before it starts to drop. Yep. Um, now, we have, uh, when we had live deer, um, we had buckwheat and he was terrified of dump trucks. And he would get super startled. <laughs> You hadn't heard all these stories. Um, he gets super startled and you couldn't hear anything. You didn't know why and you'd look around. And when he got scared, his eye got nearly, nearly round. Number three corner almost vanishes. Number two corner almost vanishes. And his eye looked like that. Not round, but very close to it. All of a sudden you'd hear it coming down the highway. It's a dump, dump truck. And it was because he got hurt one time and was petrified of dump trucks. So a very alarmed deer is gonna have a much rounder eye. Two and three are gonna be way rounded to where they're not even discernible sometimes. Now, we like on our mounts something comfortable. The deer is just, just being a deer. So we oftentimes do something like that. We call it relaxed. He's just being a deer. He's not alarmed, he hasn't spotted anything, he's not um, sleepy or anything, but there is a fine line between sleepy and relaxed. Get him too relaxed, the customer thinks he's gonna fall asleep, fall off the wall. <laughs> um, we have pictures of our deer in the pan when they're chewing on their cud and they kind of look like this. You know, not open very far. You certainly, I don't want to do one like that for a customer. I probably wouldn't get paid. So we're going to shoot for a three-cornered relaxed eye. Jared Embry likes your Crocs. He's actually oh, look at my Crocs. Look at this. New, brand new. Looks like you're going to. Are they not cool or what? <laughs> He heard that they're closing, so he went a little crazy on their little closeout sale. They're on sale. Those are my Islanders. Ooh, baby. <laughs> it's Jared. People are scared to uh, tell us what they're doing right now, but Kane is from Australia watching. John Barber's Texas sitting in a truck. Um, Brian is watching from New Hampshire. Bill Jensen, Minnesota. David is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Bob Helm shut down the shop just to watch these videos. <laughs> Douglas Biddle, hello from Pennsylvania, just got back from the beach. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little jealous of that. Sounds Duh. fun. Um, Richard from Ohio. Douglas from Indiana. 
Oh, yes, we do. Fun shoes. Look comfy. Jackie <laughs> Kelly wants your shoes. Jackie Kelly. <laughs> okay. You come see us again. Diana wants to know, can you explain the carnival? Yeah, it's not as much as you think it is. Um, here's, I'm going to show you the front here first also. Um, this is looking at the eye from the front. And make sure what's going to make your deer not look not look lifelike is you got to have plenty of glass so he can see forward. That's really important. You got the caruncle on that cast? Yep. Um, the caruncle, first of all, feel in the front part of your eye. That's what it is. That's what it is in a deer. That's what it is in every animal. It's that little bump in the front part of your eye. And it's going to sit right here. Sean's sitting on the couch eating salami and cheese and drinking a beer in Cali. Ooh, wow. That sounds good too. Um, Jody Dozier says that she just finished detailing a bass. Jody, did you do it with the water brush? Restock alert, people. If you haven't heard already or if you don't have one and you do fish, this is the pen to get. It works Sorry. good. <laughs> That's the one to get. But they're back in stock. You can find them online. Are we ready for a live demonstration? Would you like to do sure. the honors? Sure. Um, yeah, sure. I Ooh. think we're going to have two different ones. Courtney's well, hanging on the couch watching us before her anniversary dinner. Congratulations. Uh, happy anniversary. I think you did that on purpose. Now, this is the one we did last year. and. Um, he doesn't, uh, last week, I'm sorry, um, typically we would have done the nose, we did it on a different one um, because we were working at two at the same time, so the nose hasn't been done, we still have to do the nose on this lips and tear duct cutting, but we would have done that prior to the eye setting. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I just to carve off that. Okay, so on a, a lot of your mannequins, you'll note, or you can see that well, the shadow's kind of catching it on that side, so you can't see it very well, but there's a little triangular space right in here that's actually put onto the mannequin, and what that is is there, that's where your carnacle is going to sit. So if, if we would just go ahead and start setting our eye as it is, it wouldn't have that space already in there for that. So we're gonna need to come in and take out a little bit of foam, and that's just right at the top of the crease. It goes into your lacrimal crease, and we're just gonna take out, wedge out a triangle. Sorry, my hands aren't working here. Okay. And for me, I probably take out a little bit more than most. I would rather take out a little bit too much and fill it in with clay than to be in the middle of setting eyes and be hitting foam. So it's just a personal preference. And then also because I do like to use these membranes, they're nice, um, but one thing that I like to keep in mind is when we go to put these in, they're, they're a plastic, they're, they're a flexible plastic, but they are a plastic. So I like to make a little bit of extra room here to make sure that when I insert these, it's not gonna be hitting any foam. So I'm just going to kind of scratch right inside of that front area and that's just going to ensure that when we go to put our membranes in, it's going to be a little bit easier to put them in without it having the foam sticking out and making them stick out too far onto your eye. That This will allow it to, to kind of sink right in where you want it to be. Okay. And you can scratch up your mannequin if you want to, to kind of help that clay kind of stick a little bit. But, uh, do I just, what kind of eye do you want me to use? This movie is really nice to find corners and creators. Okay. They're a pretty so, eye. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to be using with blood vessels. Yep. Medium brown, defined cornea from pear is the ones that we're going to go ahead and use. It's the one that Tom has gotten so many compliments on. They're really, they're really a stunning eye when you see them. 
Okay. So if we just set the eye in there, it's going to try to fall out. So I usually like to just come in and just pinch off a little bit of clay and push it down into the back of the eye. Now it's not bulging out of the eye. You don't need this huge amount. Um, and just kind of push it into place and see how it looks. You want to make sure that, that it's enough because every eye is a little bit different. Um, this eye, after doing that, I can notice that it's sitting in a little bit further than some of the other eyes. And it's just because it's not quite as tall as some of the other eyes. So we're gonna adjust for that a little bit and we're gonna put just a little bit of clay behind that eye to kind of help it come out because one of the biggest things is you don't want your, your deer to look like it's got a sunken eye. So again, we'll just kind of push it into place and we wanna make sure, oops, we wanna make sure that our pupil is level and you don't wanna turn around and go walking across your shop at this point um, because as soon as, you know, it's a glass eye, it can roll out and hit the floor on a cement floor and ksh, and it'll wreck your day. So just kind of babysit it. What I like to do is just take a little bit of clay and put it up top. Now that eye isn't going anywhere. I can go and grab whatever tools I need or whatnot. Okay, and then we can shine a flashlight on it and that'll just kind of help that that cornea show up a little bit more, the pupil show up a little bit more, and then come from the front, make sure it's level this way. And then I also do come to the side a little bit and just kind of go back and forth. Might be able to tip the front up just a hair. When the head of a deer bends down, does the pupil change? Tom? Boy, do we have a good picture mm -hmm. of that. Yes. Um, my impression is, and from what I understand and from my deer, it happens fast, so so it's you almost need a camera or a movie camera to look. Um, but uh, if it's an involuntary action, a lot of times the pupil will follow the angle of the head like it is set in a normal is in normal position. If it's an invol or if it's voluntary action, like down drinking water, um, this is a deer with his head down, and that's about as level of a pupil as I've ever seen. And that's yeah. a deer eating or drinking. It was eating. Where it, it was wasn't, eating. where it wasn't a quick arrow going past my head, and he whipped his head really fast. But most people will say that they can't level themselves. That's like 90 degrees, I'd mm -hmm. say. To, that that pupil had to turn. It could only turn as far as the optic nerve will let it. You guys were so excited about that picture. I'm like, that's just creepy looking. But that's in our photo book, our eye photo book, which has a lot of, all the pictures that you saw the guys holding up are actually, we sell eight by 10, but we also have them in this little book to show you a little of everything. There's a little white in the eye. Now that would be if he's, he's standing there and doing a hard left. Trying to left. look a little to the left. Yep, kind of a left looking turn. Probably the same same deer a second later or earlier. It got crystal eyes. Because we shot sun shooting in the And these are really good pictures. Look at the look at the blood vessels in the front of that one. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Very cool. Okay. Um, another thing I just thought of too, a lot of students when I see them setting deer ear, deer eyes for the first time, a lot of them will like to get up here and they'll be setting everything from the side. And they'll be doing this and doing that and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I love my eye. And then all of a sudden they come over here and they sit in the front and it looks scary. So for me, it works best for me if I set everything from the front because if I can get it to look good from the front, I'll come around to the side and be like, yeah, you know, that's, it, it seems like if you set eyes from the side, you might struggle or I struggle, mm -hmm. I don't know about Tom, a little bit more. Tom always so, struggles. I'm a struggler. <laughs> you mean both, buddy. Most of these, most of these mannequins anymore, when I first started, 
there was no back plate that you set the eye against. There was nothing but a dished out. The sculptors did it with their thumb. They made a big hole. And typically now they're set at the angle you need and uh, at the cant that you want. Looks like you're writing a little love note. So I've got a pretty big roll here. I'm not using near as near of what I've got rolled out. And I'll show you two different ways to go about it. You can start on the bottom. So I'm just putting it right below where I have that V and just kind of pushing it onto the mannequin and getting that clay kind of stuck. There's our little ledge. Now we're just gonna kind of come down and we're not really putting on a ton of clay. You don't wanna have a roll of clay this size. You wanna have just enough to kind of fill the void in between the mannequin and the eyeball, okay? So it's a very small roll of clay. I kind of got a little messy right there. Okay, so that's the bottom. Now we're gonna come around and we'll do the top and it's the same thing. I just kind of roll it out in my hands and have it kind of come to a point on the one end. Again, push it onto the mannequin and I'm gonna come up just a little ways and then I'm gonna turn it to make that second corner. So this is the first corner here. Second point is right there where the eyelid would start. And now we're just going to start to work our way back. And my clay is kind of drying out because I've been playing with it. I got it in my hands and been kind of playing with it. And just kind of push it all into place. Now that's a rough, that's just a real rough start. You want to get that close, get good enough at your eye shape that you get that close. On the first try. With just putting the bottom lid on top. Of yep. It. Yep. And practice it. Um, you know, a lot of times when students will come here, you know, they'll do an eye and we'll be like, you know, or they'll be struggling with it. Okay, here's, you know, here's all, I'll do an eye for you on this side. You match it, they match it, and then I come and I tear the eye off. And I say, okay, do it again. <laughs> and they're like, what do you do that for? But it's good because. Practice makes perfect. You have to, you have to practice doing this over and over and over again. While and you're then it just will get easier. While you're working on that one, Amber, why don't you tell us a little bit about the geometry of I said? Um, I can do that. Just a couple rules of thumb that you can kind of go off of. Mm -hmm. Back to the three corner I set that Tom had. One, two, and three. If we took this eye and divided it right down the middle with a crosshair right here, a good rule of thumb for a relaxed eye is to sit that pupil right on the top of the center line. And that'll leave it slightly above and the thickness of the pupil will stay here. Um, another, good, another good rule of thumb along that same axis is to split that pupil in the middle and put the belly of that valley, the bottom lid between one and three, right here in the middle. Corner two will typically happen at the front third of the eye. So if we were to divide this here, it's in half, two, will occur in front of that halfway point. So it's up there in the front third. And three will usually sit, often sit, at the top of the pupil. So just some quick rules of thumb as you're trying to get an even and relaxed eye, um, an eye shape would be to split it and divide it. Look at some of those thirds and halves. Um, it, it works reasonably well for getting you started, it'll give you a, a place to start. Another topic that we didn't touch real quick is the rotation of eyes. Um, if we set them against that back plate that's on a 45, just to illustrate it from above, if this is a 45 degree angle off of the center line, if we were looking down, the deer's nose is down this direction, and he's looking forward, this would be about 45 degrees to start. So if we wanted to make him look 
to his left, we would bring this corner in slightly, the back out slightly, and do the same over here. So he would, this would show more white here and more white here. And you do that this with clay? White. So you would do that in the, sh you would do that first in the angle that you set the eye. Excuse me, I'll reach across you. So if, if we had the angle here and we wanted to show him looking this direction or to his left, your right, we would rotate it slightly this way and that would leave more white showing in the back. And if we took this eye and we turned it this direction, it would leave more white showing here. Remember your eyes are like wheels on a car. Yep. You turn the steering wheel, they both track together most often, just like people. Wow, that one's about ready to mount. Um, I always tell when we're teaching eye setting, I always say when you get your ears on, your lips, nose done, and your eyes, your mannequin should look alive. All that's needed is sprinkle on some hair. And you're not worried at all about getting clay okay. on the eye because it cleans off. Yep. Yep. And you're using a paintbrush that looks like an angular shader. Yep. And I, this one is my favorite one for doing eye setting read because what, it's read the... Read on the handle what um, angle it is. Uh, it's going to say. Angle shade. Three-eighths inch. Yep. And I like this one because it's big enough to, to be able to get some stuff done on this eye. It doesn't take forever to be able to, to work the clay. And it's got the point, so I'm able to get down into my points where I want them. And it's also a pretty, it's a pretty good stiff brush. It's, I mean, it's still got some, some pliability, but it's got some good stiffness to it. So a lot of times, and I don't know about you guys, but I'll use a brush or a tool, or I'll use a pin or a tool, a wooden tool to, to, to do the initial tucking when we go to put the skin on, but then a lot of times I'll use the brush to finish doing the tucking smooth. Tuck smooth. Helps with not scratching the eye probably. It does, so. and it just seems like you can really get a really nice, softer look. Soft. Let's say you accidentally scratch the brush, or the eye, after you've done all this work. Is there any way to bring it back? Yeah, you, you get your phone, and you call 1-800-Matuskas, <laughs> and say, I As scratch for my eye, send me two more pair. Uh, no, there's, there's different acrylics that you can, you can put on. Um, I think I remember the story Brian Olson used uh, the polycarbonate eyes on the buck and doe, that really nice buck and doe scene that he had on the big oak leaf, and um, it was his competition mount, and he glossed it with um, like a triple thick. So even our liquid triple thick in the little two ounce or four sure, ounce thing, sure. that would work a little drop mm -hmm. of that. Do you thin it down or do you put it on straight? I It depends how thick it is because fresh out of the jar, it's probably the right consistency, but if it sits around our shop with a loose lid on, it gets kind of kind of thick. Um, I want it so it covers the whole eye, flows without any buildup, you know, something thin. A lot of people use, what do they use, wax? Cyanized uh, floor yeah. wax and things yeah. like that? Mm -hmm. That's something people use. Um, um, anything to go down in the scratch. I've heard of people buffing glass eyes, mm -hmm. not the acrylic, but they'll buff the glass eyes to get it out. Do you lay or tuck your eyes? You're kind of talking about your method, Amber. Um, I usually tuck. I, I don't leave a big apron of skin, but mm, a strong quarter of skin um, to be able to tuck underneath. So. Yeah, so you're gonna wanna do that. And when I when I do that, I also, I like to, when I'm sculpting, I kind of make a void down here so it kind of gets the clay ready. And then I'll just smooth it back out. But that's right where all of your skin's gonna tuck, so if I can kind of get, a, get the clay ready to accept the skin down in that area, it just makes it go that much easier. And then one thing you wanna watch, um, your eyelid, so you don't end up with a wavy eyelid. If you look at your eyelid or any other eyelids, they're very smooth, 
So make sure that the distance that comes out from the eye, it doesn't get any, any wider than that. Um, you don't want him to look like he just got socked in the eye, so he doesn't need a huge eyelid. It's, it's a very minimal amount of clay. And sometimes people will get going and you'll, it'll look, the whole eye area will all look almost bubbled out. So you wanna be careful of that, that you're not using too much clay. And the top eyelid will have, it will stick out a little bit further than the bottom eyelid in the back. And that'll kind of create this little bit of an overhang, a little bit of a ledge at the back corner where the two come together in me. Um, and it's very minimal, but it is there. Jig and Jim wants to know, how do you choose the size eye? Please show correct direction of using the pre-rotated eye. Oh, good question. Um, size of the eye we didn't mention. Typically for any of our deer, I think we use 32 millimeters. Um, it's kind of accepted as, as what I think most people use. Um, there may be times that you want a bigger eye. I mean, our does out here, uh, you look at them sometimes and their eye has to be a 50 millimeter. It's like a giraffe eye. Um, but for most most of our purposes, 32 millimeter, um, you can get anything, what do we sell? Down to probably 28, maybe even 26 to 28, 30s, 32s, 34s. Um, but 32s typically. Um, as for the direction, if you're using a white based eye, like we mentioned before, um, if it's a uh, pre-rotated, let's grab this one. If it's a pre-rotated, um, you can put this any way you want. You don't want to put um, white, a big band of white in the front of both because he's going to be looking off, you know, too far off to the side. Um, if you put it in the front of both and have a big, or in the back of both and have a big band of white, he's going to be cross-eyed. So, if you were putting it in the front, make sure you keep it extremely, extremely minimal. Usually, the white is meant to direct the focus to the left or to the right, and by putting it in the front or the back. Yep. You want to kind of zoom in while she's looking a little yep. bit. I got a couple of things so to talk about. Got a question too. What's the question? How long have you been doing this? <laughs> too long, Ben. Too long. How long have you been doing it? They call it stuffing when I started, what? and literally it brought you. Um, forty years. Forty years. That's it. That's it. Oh, well, gosh, that's like you've been doing it longer than that. Uh, forty years, and that's age, but you've been doing it longer than that. And we did not have um, mannequins like this when I started. I mean, they were well, they were paper. They're made out of paper. They're paper mache. Okay and it was red rosin paper and a wallpaper paste put together in a fiberglass mold. And when it came out, it did not have blood vessels. It did not have nostril detail. The, the eyes were nothing more than dents. You had to, um, you had to know a lot more than you do now. <laughs> and Brett, how and long have were, you been doing it? Uh, a long time too. <laughs> <laughs> not as long as him. Um, <laughs> dinosaur, dinosaurs weren't. <laughs> Still around. Um, 1996, I came to class here. Wow. So January, so 22 years. Wow. 22. See, so you've been doing it. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> 40. I said, 40. 40 is a long time. <laughs> oh, funny. So we're kind of talking about, if, so we're kind of talking about um, our whitetail eye setting. We have a great line of competitor's choice whitetail deer mannequins. Another thing we have is mule deer. Sagebrush series yeah. mule deer. Um, Jeremy Judkins, he lives in Salt Lake City, Utah, and he actually buys our forms by freight, and he buys them by freight, and he has them in his place. So if any of you are in the Utah area, you can go and get your mannequins. It's kind of our little secret distributor. Out there. <laughs> but uh, I'll show you this, and what Jeremy says. Matuska MDSS are definitely my favorite mule deer forms on the market. Everything was done right on these forms. I also love the mule deer ear liners. They have a great shape and are thin and flexible. If you have not tried these products yet, you need to. And that's something I feel like everybody that tries our mule deer forms won't stop. It's good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Very nice. So definitely um, check thanks, those Jeremy. out. Yeah. 
And call him. His number was on there. You can call him and pick up ear liners and the mule deer forms. He, um, he sent pictures of his work, and uh, it's one thing to get a compliment from somebody, but when you look at their work, sometimes you think, mm, you know, um, his mule deer are top notch. They look exceptionally nice. He knows mule deer. Bob Helm says this an honest and helpful group of people that will go the extra mile to see that they understand what you need to complete your projects. They really take the time to talk you through what you need and don't need great place to do business. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Five stars. We love getting reviews. We love getting recommended. We love it. So keep it up. Antelope, you got pictures of antelope there. I got all sorts of stuff. Great like John Cargill antelope, Gary Zayner antelope. It's antelope season. It's antelope season, right? Antelope start to be harvested. Oh, don't forget to stay tuned. We do have a huge sale giveaway at the end, along with our giveaway winner and the announcement of the new one. But we do have a sale, so don't forget to stay tuned to the end. Give it away a cat, little kitty. What? Kirsten says we're losing viewers. You guys stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget it. Hey, that's not fun. <laughs> and then as I was going around and finishing everything up I kind of added the carnacle I usually don't put that in until right before I mount um, so you could go ahead and do that now or you could do that later um, there is on the skin you can actually see where the carnacle was on the skin so I do like to that's kind of a good point to be able to correlate with the skin and the clay as far as where it goes. And then also make sure you come back to the side because again, a lot of times when we're setting our eyes, this back corner, the third corner will start to eke down and you'll get a droopy puppy dog look eye. So you wanna make sure that you double check that and make sure that it's above point number one. So you keep that one, two, three symmetry. How long would, it, would you say that it takes to uh get a deer done, start to finish. It sounds like a hunter question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or maybe, uh, Ben, maybe you want to start your career today, <laughs> call us to go to school. <laughs> uh, we keep pretty accurate time cards on things. And, you know, like a deer, we do so many deer, and after you take the cards and you, you look, and that one was 14 hours, that one was, 10, that one was 11, that one was 12. Typically, you add them all up and divide by that number. I think our, to do a really nice deer head, one that we think is, you know, like something the best customer can get, a best a customer can get, we're looking at 10 to 12 hours. And that doesn't include, um, I don't know, you figure in the taping and talking to the customer yeah. and things like right. that. There's a lot of extra things. Customer wants to tell you about his hunt, you might as well add on another hour or two. Ben, you need to call, he said he'd enjoy school. Call Vicki, 1-800-488-3256. She'll be here tomorrow. Give her a call and talk your way about school and what we offer for you. Um, I noticed John Bellucci, he watches all the time, yes. almost every week, he doesn't miss. But he did recommend us and said some of the best white-tailed deer head forms on the market today. Wow. Thanks, wow. John. You know, I want to go back to after our first one selecting forms, um, we were showing measurements and he sent us a picture of his measurement sheet and if we're doing something special or something we know is a little out of the ordinary, we take extensive measurements too. But uh, other than the nose to eye and the nose to the back of the head and the, you know, two or three during the neck, along the neck, um, you can really measure between the eyes. We measure between our eyes on our bobcats and our bears and our sheep, you know, but we don't on our deer. Um, we stretch them or compress them, you know. Uh, there's a lot more measurements that that you can take to be even more accurate. Um, and John brought that to my attention. I thought I, I kind of didn't, wasn't as in-depth as I should have been. <laughs> Do you guys got other stuff you want to show? Um, well, this here, this is the membrane that we were talking about earlier. And some people like to put it in when they mount and then other people like to put it in after the mount is dry. So when, I usually do it after the mount is dry and in order to do that, you have to trim down your membrane. So this is about how I trim for 
know, if it were a left eye, if mm -hmm. it would be my way. This would be the top, actually, or I'll turn it around. This would be the top, this would be the bottom. And if we're gonna put it in in the clay or when, when we're mounting, you'll be able to use a bigger piece if you want to. But to fit this large of a piece in, yeah, you can see there's very little of that that actually shows. And in fact, I think that one, he's got his eye turned a little bit. So that's even showing more than if he was looking straight forward. So I can kind of put one in here real quick so you can have an idea of just how little. And you want to be careful because this, because they are kind of a softer plastic. So you want to kind of be careful about how hard you push down because you can put an indent in them. But really, it's about where that slope comes to go down. Here, I can grab. There we go. Thank you can kind of see it. It doesn't go way out here onto the eye. From the front, if you're looking, it'll be about where that slope is, and then it kind of goes down and disappears again in the top. There's very, very little. It's like a slippery slide. Yep. It just kind of, it almost follows that, that perfect circular shape on the bottom. Wow. And I trimmed both of these for a left eye, just so you could see what the difference was between the two. But It seems that when I put them in um, before, especially if I don't trim them, if you put the whole membrane in, even though that's critter clay and it's not supposed to shrink, there is enough distortion in it when it dries that my membrane seemed to buckle. So right. I like to make a spot for them, but I like to put them in when I do finish work. Yeah, and sometimes the skin, if you don't have your eye skin thinned enough, then as that skin is drying, then it can also be pushing on that, on that plastic piece and all of a sudden it's not where you put it. So sometimes, sometimes it's easier to do it after, or sometimes it's, it works for people to do it before. You just, you just have to try and it out. And a word about thinning, you're gonna want your skin, you do a beautiful job of thinning, you can see through her skin. I mean, that's how thin you want it. Um, we're getting close to the end, but I'm not gonna announce the sale or the giveaway to the very end, but we do have a couple new products here that they're gonna show you. Um, one of the things we can't keep in stock is our small, it sounds crazy, but our multi-bin stand. This is a little bit bigger version, it's available online, and like it has spare. enough room to hold everything. 70 mm -hmm. some. Sure. Any tools? The water tools back in stock, along with the pan pastels that these three have specifically handpicked each color. Each color, and it not only people are looking to price check, we are mapped, they have matte pricing. So if you find it somewhere else, they're not following the rules. This is from Pan Pastel. It's the price is $67.50. It also comes with the tools, and they handpicked each of their products. Amber used this tool, not just on the pan pastels, but you were using it inside the nose with the clay work mm -hmm. and really like that. Mm -hmm. So again, handpick the um, colors. If there's other colors you don't see, we do carry a lot of them single um, on our website. But these are our kits. Um, our, oh, these are new too, online. These Chinese mm -hmm. scissors, they're like taxidermy shears. I like those. They're very sharp, 450. Those are the Inexpensive. best. Inexpensive. And they fit my hands. Yeah. My hands don't They're sharp. I wouldn't want to put my hand in there. But those are also available online and you won't see them in the catalog. Um, let's talk our giveaway. Last week we did a giveaway for... A nose cast? Yep. So that was our giveaway last week. The giveaway this week is an iBook. I got one. So that's the iBook. So make sure you like, comment, share, take a friend, all that fun stuff. Tell us what you're doing. Brett doesn't want to hear it, but I think it's fun. <laughs> Let us know you're watching, where you're watching it from. We're located in Northwest Iowa. It's Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Who won the nose? The nose winner is... Win a winner. Chris Grindy from Wisconsin. Hey, Chris. Chris. Congratulations. So congratulations. We'll get that out for you. Um, so next week, if you want this iBook that the guys were basically showing you all the pictures from and using today, make sure to like, share, tag a friend. Sale. <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> Show me those cracks. <laughs> uh, we are doing 15% off all eyes. That's oh my pear, Tohican, reflective, flex, 
aqua, live eyes, Jeez, you name it. Did you have a fish? 15% off all. Now, this sale only goes through Sunday, and it's kind of like when we run out, we run out. So don't miss out on this because it's not going to last. But if Todd's watching, thanks, Todd. <laughs> no, so don't forget to order. Go online or call the girls. They're ready for you tomorrow. And next week, oh, we got to talk next week. Are you guys going solo or are you we we're it, taking right? next week off? We won't have some of our staff. Me Mandy, Mandy will be in I'm Wisconsin. I'm going to visit Mark in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. <laughs> and Kirsten has school open house. So we'll let you guys know first the next week of what is going on, whether we do it early or these three are on their own, which could be really oh fun. God. Amber and might be on open house. I too. might be on open house too. Oh, man. We'll, we'll let you know. Oh. These two could just be doing selfies we the whole time. It could be great. We'll just look at Tom's crop. I'm not yeah, sure. Sounds like he said something else. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. You got Matuska Tax and Resupply Company every Thursday, 4:30. Tune in and don't forget to catch us. You can always go back to our Facebook and watch all of our videos that we've been doing here. Thanks for watching. Yep. Thank you. Thanks.